Now it's time for resolution, which is actually one of my favorite things you learn in IB physics. So I'm glad you get to do it in HL. So I want to explain this. It's actually called a Rayleigh criterion, or I don't know how you say it. Do you say Rayleigh? Rayleigh? Either way, this criterion. Um, we're going to talk about what it means to be just resolved. And I think it's, it's really important to remember again, what does the interference pattern look like for one object? Remember if we had like one slit um, and we had light passing through it, the diffraction pattern would look something like this. We say the interference pattern, sorry, something like this right here. Well, I didn't draw it very nicely, but something like this, you know, with little peaks like this. This would be one object would do this. Here's the situation, watch me here. Um, what if you have two different objects? Now those two objects then, you know, uh, a lot of the examples are like, you know, at some distance away, like way, way, way far away, they're going to appear like one object. And then as you know, they get closer, then all of a sudden you can tell them apart. You can distinguish them. You know, the example could be like, you know, you're driving at night and there's a car and it looks like one light. And at some point you can distinguish, oh, it's two headlights and now you know it's a car. So when does it happen going from sort of one to two things? That's what we call just resolved. So this is when this happens. So imagine now you have two different objects. Each of them is going to make this sort of diffraction pattern, like on the screen right here where I'm pointing. You see that there? So it's going to be two different diffraction patterns that are going to look just like this. The issue is we're going to have an angle between them. So can you imagine that I can make one diffraction pattern? Actually, here, what I'm going to try to do, let's see if I can do this here. I'm going to try to make one diffraction pattern here. Oh, I hope I can draw this okay that and it keeps going like this oh, something like this at least this is ah, I think it's good enough so let's attempt to let's just see now can I actually copy both of these no, maybe I'll just try to envelop both of these okay good so I'm gonna to try to copy this and now I'm gonna to try to paste this there we go so imagine that I took this thing right here uh, oh can I change its color oh even better I'll change it to purple nah, red so here's the issue imagine this now I've got two different objects and this is gonna be really clear how they go on this like what so I got two different objects can you see how here the two different patterns they're really far away see like I mean we're gonna literally gonna look at the distance between their peaks here remember though that that x-axis that's radians though remember that so what happens is this as they get closer and closer together I can't tell them apart you know then I can't distinguish them when they're really far away I can totally tell them apart what happens when you're just resolved? Watch this. It's when I'm going to place the peak of one on the minimum of the other. So it's actually going to be right. If I've done it right, it should be right here. Why is this? This is because, uh, take a look right here. I'm going to draw a little dot line. See the peak of this one right here, of this uh, red one right here? Watch this peak right here lines up with the minimum of that one. And this peak of this one lines up with the minimum of that one. So we would say that, see this angle between them here? This is an angle in radians. If that's the angle between the peaks here. Uh, I mean, it looks like an x-axis, but it's actually an angle, and it's in radians. So this is the interesting part here. We have this equation right here that's going to tell us this. And you don't have to memorize this one. You can look it up. But it says that theta equals 1.22 lambda over b. That's the Rayleigh criterion. That's how you know two objects are just resolved. This works for a circular aperture only, so that means if the entrance, uh, the, the aperture, the hole the light's passing through is a circle. That could work, for example, for your eyeballs. I've seen questions on exams that talk about your eye, they talk about the aperture there. It could be a, a telescope, they like to do that, because that has a circular aperture as well. So we're going to define the angle between those two interference patterns. See that theta right here that I just drew? And that'll be done in radians, so rad. Then we got the wavelength of light, that's in meters as usual, and this aperture width, that'll be the size of the opening, that'll be in meters. So this is the key thing is this, we say they're just resolved if this happens. So the key thing then, the stipulation is this, what if the angle is less than this? You know, if those two things are closer together, then you can't tell them apart. And if that angle is greater than that, then you can tell them apart. And right when it's equal to this magic number, that's when we say it's just resolved. So this is this term resolution, which you use a lot for your phones, don't you? And for screens and things like that, they always talk about the resolution. How many pixels per whatever, whatever. This is the resolution. This is related to this exactly. This is exactly how can your eyes tell the difference between 
you know, different pixels. Can you see it? Uh, what can you image maybe from space? These kind of questions. Those are really important. But now, again, this tells you the angle between two things, but often you want the actual length, like the physical you know, length in meters. So how do you project this? We've shown this, this a few times. Remember the arc length formula from mathematics. It says that if your angle is in radians, and this is the radius of a circle, and this is the arc length formula here, then it says that you can just say that L equals R theta if your angle is in radians. Super easy. So that's the one we're going to use. Now let's use a real example. And this is actually a really neat example here. So what if we have a spy satellite and it's orbiting at an altitude of this? Um, now I've done a little bit of dodgy stuff right here with this example just to linearize it, but it's going to get you pretty close to what you're actually looking at here. So this is the interesting part about this question here is that like the US military, for example, they use these uh, spy satellites and some of them, for example, are called KH-11s. Um, and these ones right here, we know that their diameter is 2.4 meters because we can tell by the kind of rockets that they actually use to launch them. Also because the Hubble Space Telescope is very similar to a KH-11, uh, just looking up at the sky instead of looking down and spying on people. So we actually know the size of that opening. So we know the size of the opening is, uh, we know that B is 2.4 meters. Now, we want to image at wavelength of 550 nanometers, so now we know lambda is 550 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And we're going to say that it's orbiting at an altitude of 250 kilometers. Now, this part is a little bit dodgier because I've had to linearize this. Uh, not linearize, sorry, uh, circularize. In other words, real orbits of satellites are actually elliptical, so they do change their altitudes. I've just made it a circle to make it a little bit easier for us. So this is fudging the data a little bit, but not by much. You'll see this actually gets us very, very close to what's... Well, the U.S. military won't tell us this, but this is what it is. Um, so this height right here is 250,000 meters, you could say, right? Because it's 250 kilometers. Here we go. And what we want to do, minimum resolution, what that means is that we need to take this right here and try to find out like what's this length right here. If we use this arc length formula where this is theta, then we want L. This is what we're looking for. We want this distance right here. Like what's that distance it can actually image? We're gonna call this the diffraction limiting uh, limited because this is as good as it could possibly be. In real life, it's gonna be a lot worse than this because there's gonna be things like uh, the atmosphere itself is gonna mess up the image because it's gonna make it fuzzier because the wave fronts are not uh, uniform when they reach you, they're all messed up. Uh, that's why we take big telescope like the Hubble Space Telescope is out in outer space so that it can image things better so it sort of untwinkles the stars. Although now we have telescopes uh, with these big adaptive optic systems where they basically bore sighted a big, giant, ridiculous laser. And that laser actually um, excites some atoms high in the altitude. Uh, what they can do then is uh, sample those and actually use that to untwinkle the star by having a movable, deformable mirror. It's actually kind of magic. But let's just look at a spy satellite here, what it's doing. So if we want to do this minimum resolution, remember, we've got to apply this Rayleigh criteria here. Theta is 1.22 lambda over b. So let's figure that out. Okay, so we're going to put that in. So theta is 1.22 lambda over b. Always write this for your examiner so you can show them you know what you're doing. Then we're going to put in the wavelength, which is 550 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Divide that by b, which is 2.4 meters. I'm going to use my calculator for this. Uh, so 550 times 10 to the minus 9. Multiply that by 1.22 and divide that by 2.4. I end up with an answer of, boy, that's really small. I guess it should be. It's a spy satellite after all. It's pretty good. This is not degrees. Remember, this is radians. This is my angle. So that means this, I know this angle now. And remember how if I want, I have that angle. Now I just have to project it over distance here and find out, you know, what that gives you when you actually look at the distance. And that's when I can use this L equals R theta equation because I can say that L equals R. R is this value right here. If this was a whole circle going all the way around, then R would be 250,000. And theta would be that answer we just got here, 2.79 times 10 to the minus 7 radians. That's a dot, by the way, not 2 point. So I'm going to take my answer, basically, on my calculator and do times 250,000. I end up with L equals 0, 0.0. I should probably just do this to, uh, I could say, well, 6989. That actually rounds to like 0 0.07 meters. So think about this. That's, that's seven centimeters, you know, roughly. So what this tells you is that from space, in theory, 
this KH11 satellite should be able to image up to, you know, seven centimeters. What that means is that it can distinguish anything that's bigger than seven centimeters. It should, in theory, be able to distinguish them, which means, um, I don't know, what if you're going to give that satellite the finger? Let's just say, like, let's say you like, gave it the middle finger. As long as that's about seven centimeters, in theory, I guess, they could see your middle finger there. If you're a conspiracy theorist, you might be worried about that. I don't know who they are. There's no nefarious intent, really. Well, I guess it could be, especially depending on where you live. Um, but can you imagine that? You could actually, in theory, then sort of give them the middle finger, and if they could image at seven centimeters, I guess they could probably, maybe, possibly see your middle finger. They could actually tell it was a middle finger. Uh, however, it's a lot worse than that. So that's, like I said, that's the maximum. That's the best you could do. Of course, you could try changing the wavelength. You could try changing the aperture, and this is what we do. So, uh, but if you want to take, you know, optical images, this is what it looks like. You could, by the way, reverse this. What if you set this to be, um, what if you wonder how big of a telescope would you need to, I don't know, see your fingerprints from space, for example. There's a Reddit forum, there's a Reddit thread actually that's all about conspiracy theories. I really love reading that one and I sometimes, I have to admit, I'm a bit of a troll. I sort of go in there and sort of get people really excited sometimes just because I enjoy it. I don't know why. I get a sick pleasure from that. But for example, something like this, people would freak right out about this. Like, no, no, you can do the math and figure it out. You can figure out what you would need. So in optical uh, situations like this, you could figure out what's the value of B. So in other words, you set basically your resolution equal to roughly your fingerprint. So I don't know, maybe like a millimeter or so. Put in a millimeter, so like 0 0.001 for L, and work your way backwards and solve for B. And you'll find out what size of a telescope you need in theory to take your fingerprints from space. So until they start making telescopes that wide, you'll see it's really wide. You don't have to worry. No one can take your fingerprints from space yet. They can do a lot of other weird things from space, but not that, not yet at least. Isn't that cool?